you know, like we've been saying, the, the lines are getting blurrier, right? And so we do have some of those as customers because Alex said, of course, they have their own labels and they need to promote their own brand. And so, you know, Target uh, is actually a customer in APAC of Binder, so I can just kind of use that as a, as a general example. Um, but they've almost got a, a different priority here where they are now creating these promotions. They need to build a brand and drive a lot of uh, advertising, whether it's to their site or to... Um, they're in store that is kind of this, and we always say at Binder, no brand is an island. Mm -hmm. Brands exist in this complex, diversified network of relationships. And so it's, it's rarely is it ever just Target, even if it's their own label, it's Target plus Threshold or whatever one of their, uh, right. their labels are called, right? Um, it's like you've got this brand interplay, let alone all the partnerships. They have Starbucks in their stores, right? Or Disney, they do things with. Um, and so what I mean by that is, I would start in that sense with the dam because there's got to, there's going to be so much content not even related to e-commerce that they that they have to get out quickly and you know put their their brand first uh, step on. Now, if you bring it more to the brand side again in these definition of whoever's manufacturing and delivering to the yep. digital shelf, you know we have um, many conversations that we had the other day where they invested first in Salsify because that is really like sort of step one in establishing a digital shelf where maybe the notion of it didn't even exist. And even the role of digital shelf manager, I imagine, uh, Alex, I saw a bunch at the event, but I don't know that that existed five years ago or maybe, you know, like 15 no. years ago, maybe, maybe a merchandising mm -hmm. manager as it pertained to Definitely brick and mortar, but yeah. Yeah. So Alex, I mean, so basically, so if I listen back, so it kind of depends, but probably depends on who you are as a retailer or a brand where you're going to start. But Alex, is there anything you disagree with or agree with in what Brian just said? Yeah, nothing I disagree with. I think um, the way we think about it, and this kind of goes back to the definition of the digital shelf um, as the, the brand's packaging, right? The PDP is now that package. So I think you have to think about the yep. PDP holistically. That's where the consumer spending time, that's where they're going to decide if they want to purchase or not. So everything from the search result they're going to get to the product title, then they see the images, then they see the descriptions, then they see the bullets, then they see the below the fold enhanced content, maybe there's videos, then they see the reviews, right? You got to sort of think about it holistically. And I think that's both for brands and retailers. And that's where it gets really important for them to work together. So brands have to be really good at getting that content ready to send to the PDP. And retailers have to get really good at making it easy for the brands to get that content to them, especially if they're going to be changing their requirements every day right. and need the brands to keep that content updated.